Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go down to Pine Ridge, I'm going to take a minute to read a specially interesting letter that we received last Thursday. It's from Mr. J.S.S. of Terre Haute. Here's what he writes. I've been listening to Lum and Abner ever since they started on the radio. I think they're swell. But frankly, I didn't believe what the announcer said about Horlick's malted milk. Then one night I heard him say that a glass of Horlick's hot just before going to bed helps one sleep more soundly. I hadn't been sleeping so well myself, so I thought I'd give your product a trial. Boy, did it work. The very first night I tried it, I slept like a top. I drink it every night now just before going to bed, and I sure sleep soundly. Feel fine and refreshed in the morning, too. It's me for Horlicks now, every time. Well, thank you, Mr. J.S.S. We're as glad as you are that you decided to give Horlicks malted milk a trial. It certainly is a fine aid to sounder, more refreshing sleep. We hope that some of Lum and Abner's other friends will try it, too. It's a good idea to always keep a package on hand. It has so many other uses, too. You can get Horlicks at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Following the unsuccessful engagement at the county seat, Lum and Abner used their last few dollars to move the circus to Belleville, only to learn after they had the tent all set up that there was a $200 city license that must be paid before they can open the show. <laughs> Lum and Cedric made a hurried trip to Belleville this morning to straighten the matter out. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears down at the Jotham Down store, where Lum is just entering upon returning from his trip. Listen. Well, come in, Lum, come in. When would you get back? I just got in, Grandpappy, just got in. I've been looking for you ever since noon. Yeah, it's taking us a heap longer to get over there and back now, Larry Wood. I already got somebody to drive us over that it could see. I thought Cedric was aiming on driving for you. Well, he did, but he can't see no better than I can. Them spectacles he's got makes things look so fur off he can't tell when to turn a curve or nothing like that. That's right. That would be a nuisance trying to drive with them new glasses on. Well, mine is mighty nigh bad. These are mine magnified so bad I start turning a curve before we even get to them. That's a wonder you never had an accident. Well, that's the reason it's taken so long. He's had to poke along in low gearness, see a curve ahead of us, and I'd ask Cedric how fur off to it looked to him, and... I knowed how far it looked to me, of course, so I just sort of divided the difference and started turning. And of course, we missed it a time or two, just turned right off in the road, but never turned over, nothing like that. Going so slow, just sort of eased down off in the road, you know. Well, I do know. Why don't you take them glasses off? Why, we've got to worry now, we can't see nothing without them on. Yes, sir. You and Abner and Cedric have just about ruined your eyes wearing them spectacles. I don't think any one of you needed them in the first place. What about this, Abner? Has he been over here today? No, I ain't saw him. He ain't been around. Might be over about the place, Arnie. Well, I'll call over and see. We've got to do something about that circus. Uh, did you get it fixed up to where they can open up now? No, they won't let us sell a ticket till we put up $200 for a city license. Wait a minute. Hello? Peabody Place? Oh, Elizabeth? Uh-huh. Is Abner there? Uh-huh. Well, wake him up, please, Mom, and tell him I want to talk to him. All right. You can tell he's worried to death over this. <laughs> she said he was sitting out on the front gallery asleep. Yeah, I don't believe Abner's feeling well, Mom. He's had a headache for a week now. Well, he ain't the only one. Me and Cedric's both got him, too, but we've got to get that circus opened up some way or other, headaches or not. Well, hello? Yeah, this is Mom. Yeah, I just got back. No, no, that's what I'm calling about. I talked to everybody in Belleville that's got any say-so at all, and they said before we sold every ticket over there, we had to put up $200 for city license. Why, no, I never paid it. Where do you think I'd get $200? Huh? Oh, well, quit trying to guess. I said I never got it. No, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They can't open up. Or to do what? Well, where are we going to get the money to move with? It cost us fifty dollars to get it moved over there, and it'll cost us another fifty to move it somewhere else. And we just ain't got the money. 
Well, it just looks like there ain't but one thing to do, and that's to raise the $200 someplace and leave it there this week. I don't know where. That's what I called you for, though. Maybe you might have thought up some ideas. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> Sitting out there on the front gallery asleep. Well, I don't know what to do. My granny said it just looks like it never rains but what it pours. I said it never rains but what it pours. Why, no, the weather over there was fine. It wasn't raining, though. Oh, I never done no such a thing. I just said it never rains but what it pours. I meant... Well, I weren't talking about Belleville, Abner. I never meant it was raining over there. No. 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 It ain't raining no place as far as I know. Well, I just said it because... No, no, it's just an old expression, an old Eddard saying. When a lot of things happen this way, you always say it never rains but what it pours. Well, all right, I say it then. Huh? If what? No, no, if it was just drizzling, you wouldn't say it's pouring. Of course not. Oh, but I ain't sure enough talking about sure enough rain, have I? No, not snow or sleet or nothing. Well, just forget about the rain. Well, what I want to know, how are we going to raise that $200? Well, get yourself over here and let's figure it out some way. Yeah, I'm over at the store. Well, why can't you? Well, it ain't raining, no, Abner. I told you it weren't raining. I never know such a thing. Well, all right. All right, but get yourself over here if you have to swim. <laughs> Crazy, he did get something on his mind. It's worth the body's life to straighten him out. Said he couldn't come over here. Didn't want to get out in the rain. <laughs> well, it ain't raining, Mom. Now, don't you start that van, Pab. I've got enough troubles on my mind without arguing with you. I've got to get a hold of that banker in there at the county seat if I can. See if I can make a bore. Right? <laughs> it ain't none of my business, Mom. But if I was you, I'd think it over careful before I borrowed any money to invest in that circus. Well, I ain't borrowing it because I want to. Wait a minute. Hello? Is this Central? Uh, I, I want the Union Bank in there, please, Mom. Huh? <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I, I want to speak to them. <laughs> yes, Mom. Now, Sir Lum, I sure wouldn't do it. Well, Grandpa, we can't just leave their circus sitting over at Belleville paying them performers and feeding them animals unless we're taking in some money. It never take me long to figure that out. Even a goose can see that. Wait a minute. Hello? Is this Mr. Duke talking? Uh, this is uh, Lum Edwards out here at Pine Ridge. Yes, sir. Oh, probably well, thank you. Well, I, I just wondered if I could make a barry in there at your bank. A barry? Yeah, well, I'm uh, needing about $200. Well, uh, yeah, well, I've got my store here for one thing. I can put that up, I reckon. Oh, about seven or eight hundred dollars worth of stock, I'd say, just offhand. Yeah. Well, now, that would be fine. I sure would appreciate it. I'm in a sort of a tight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it looks like everything happens at once. It never rains before, I mean, uh, or nothing. Uh, I'll be in there just as quick as I can get there, then. All right, and I'm sure much obliged to you, Mr. Duke. <laughs> I'll never forget you for this. All right, sir. All right. Goodbye. My granny says a friend in need. Well, if you want my notions on it, Mom, he'd have did you a big favor if he'd have just turned you down. Told you nothing doing. Uh, let's see. I've got to call Squire Skimp over at Belleville and let him know I've made arrangements for the money. Let's see. I've got to find some way to get to the county seat this afternoon, too. Somebody drive me in, they might get Dick Hudson. I got to get to the bank for it closer. Hello? Central? I want to talk to Belleville, please, Mom. Yes, Mom. Well, I want to talk to Squire Skimp over there. Uh, he's with the Edwards and Peabody Circus. Well, I expect you find him around the county clerk's office there, at the city hall or the courthouse or somewhere. Yes, Mom. 
All right, I'll hold it. Might have time to put on an afternoon performance just this afternoon. Well, sir, I wouldn't go through with all that worry and trouble for all the money there are in Belleville. I'd be just like Abner. I'd just sleep through it. Yes, Mom? All right, all right. Hello, Squire. <laughs> yeah, this is Lump. Yeah, I've got some good news. I, I made arrangements for the $200 in at the Union Bank at the county seat. Yeah, I just now talked to him. Well, uh, just draw a draft on my account in there at the bank and uh, sign your name, my name by you, and by the time uh, the check gets in there, I'll have the money in the bank. Yeah, I'm going right in there this afternoon. Yeah. Well, now, that's what I was thinking. All right, Squire. <laughs> All right, I hope you do a big bit. All right. Goodbye. Now, here comes Abner out front there, Mom. Well, for the land sake. I can what he's got an outfit like that on for. Well, he can't see with them spectacles on. He can't tell what the weather's like. <laughs> he still thinks it's raining. Abner, what in the world are you doing with an umbrella and a raincoat and rubber boots on a day like this? I'll find you. <laughs> Never rains with what it pours. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a fine, easy way to get your youngsters to drink all the milk they need this spring. Just let them drink plenty of Horlicks malted milk. Mixed with water alone, it has all the fine bodybuilding qualities of full cream milk. Like milk, it is rich in the precious elements, calcium and phosphorus and iron. So essential for building sturdy bones and sound teeth. Yet in addition, Horlicks contains the good nourishment the extracts of wheat and malted barley give. Horlicks, too, is so much easier to digest. It's in a form that young, delicate digestive systems can easily handle. So get a package from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Your youngsters need it now that spring is coming, and they love the full, delicious flavor of Horlicks. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.